Hello, this is Joseph. In this screencast, we're going to be going over how to share data between components. And so to start, the form I have here on my, on my right side is just a basic name form. Um, and the point of this is when has middle name is checked, we're going to be communicating back to the middle name component and asking it to go ahead and hide it uh, when it uh, or show it when it is checked. If not, it'll actually be hidden. So let's see here. Let's get started. So we probably want a way to actually show and hide these components. And I'll go ahead and make a new attribute here called hide. And we'll set this to one. And we'll go ahead and go to our text box field component and add in hide. Um, and right now, that's not going to do anything. It's still going to show. But from here, we can actually do the conditional rendering and say hide or um, yeah, hide equals, and then we're going to say uh, hide. So if hide is set um, from the option, I will go ahead and use that. If not, I'll do default to the false. And if it is set to some true value, it should actually hide it. So if we go back and we set this to zero, this should actually not hide it. However, the way that write works is that it, it, zero could or could not be true or false. So we will probably want something like an actual expression that then says false. So that, that if that was set to true, then it'll do the same thing as we were setting one to zero. So this is something to keep in mind for that. Um, so, so we'll go ahead and leave it as, as one for now because that's kind of what we want defaulted as. And then we also need a way to emit the value back into the component. And so what we're going to want to do um, is in our checkbox field, emit back if it is checked or not. And so I'm going to have an event for on change, and it's called it's going to be called a value changed. Actually, not really value, but it's check change. But I'll leave it as value change. And I'll go ahead and make that that function. So value changed. And then this will have the event. And then what we're going to say is this dot checked equals e dot target dot checked. OK. So now that's set. We can go ahead and go back to our text box field. And actually, no, let's not do that. So the the complicated part of this is while we actually do have a checked or not checked, we need a way to be able to send this checked um, data into my middle name component. And the easiest way to do that is just make a component on top of it, encapsulate all this inside of that component. This way you have direct access to all of the components inside. And so what I'm going to do next is go ahead and actually just make, make another tag here called my form. So my form, and I'm going to go ahead and just create that file and go ahead and move this into my form. Actually, just call this my form. And uh, just put a script tag there for now. And then go back to my body of my index page and just put in the tag of my form. So what this is going to let me do, first of all, I should be exactly the same as before, which it is. But what this will let me do is then get direct access to each of these child components inside of my prior, inside of my my form components. Okay, so now that's there, we can go ahead and actually start to make some some progress. We're going to go ahead and actually say var self, and you know you really don't need to do this if you're going to be using the ES6 syntax, but just for the people who are used to, to older versions of JavaScript, I'll, I'll continue this method. Uh, I'll show you how to show up, um, configure Babel if you wanted to use Gulp and NPM and stuff to go ahead and do build commands and actually have some type of live watch script in another session. 
So I'm going to say this dot tags and tags give you access to all of these tags and they're going to be based off the name of set. It, it could have been of ID if I put it there, but it also works off the name. So then we're going to say has middle name. And what's going to happen is because we actually have the checkbox change a value inside of the component, that's going to emit a trigger, uh, emit event. And so we're going to hook up onto the observable system that each component has in itself. And we're going to say that when um, when the, the, the has middle name checkbox is updated, go ahead and react to that. So then we're going to say um, self dot tags. So we're getting access outside of here because this is now the actual has middle name component. So we're self dot tags dot middle name dot uh, update. This way we don't have to have two lines. And we're going to say hide and we're going to pass in the uh, the checkbox so this dot checked and we're going to want to reverse this role so we're going to say if it's not checked um, go ahead and hide it if not then go ahead and show it so I have that set so now if I go ahead and refresh this should technically go ahead and show and hide it and yeah, I mean, that's that's basically the magic of all this. If you want, let me go ahead and actually do this. I'll go ahead and omit self.tag, so console.log. And you'll see what I mean by you'll have access to everything. So here I have my first name tag, my middle name, or has middle name, my last name, and my middle name. And these, this has all the data to that you also have access to the parent inside of these tags so if you have like the text box field from my parent you could technically put logic inside of this to say okay go to my parent get something from my parent um, now this type of, of development using the observables is more or less okay um, you I, I generally don't like to do this because now you're typically coupling the dependency of my form to always expect to have these tags on there because you're using um, this in there so you can have something like a global observable and in when these these components are mounted they're they're mounted they're 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 mounted to the global observable as well so when some update triggers you can have this global observable kind of react to stuff and you can get this logic outside of these components and not have to keep creating custom components but yeah, that's that's basically how you would do it the, the easiest way that I that I know of in Riot.